If you're a fan of the Edmonton Oilers or the Philadelphia Flyers, you might have a kick out of our topic for today's video. So, right now, actually, no, not right now, it's actually going to go on at 8 p.m., Eastern time, something like that. Yeah, so 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We have ourselves the NCAA National Championship game going on between the Denver Pioneers as well as the Minnesota State Mavericks. You have yourselves this final game. These two teams have been battling it out in single elimination games the past few days over here, and it's given us all some very good, very skilled, and very exciting NHL prospect action. We talked yesterday about Owen Power and Kent Johnson, two guys on the Michigan team that were eliminated in yesterday's contest to this Denver squad, and how they had signed on with their respective NHL clubs, obviously Power going to Buffalo and Kent Johnson going over to Columbus, but I also said in that video that I wanted to talk as well about the team that eliminated them. The Michigan Wolverines, a stacked team in many people's eyes with names like Luke Hughes, Kent Johnson, Matty Beneers, Brendan Brisson, Thomas Bordalo, Owen Power, of course, you had such a stacked Michigan team going out there against the Denver Pioneers on, when the heck was that, Thursday? And they lost 3-2 in overtime in what many people called an upset win because Denver wasn't really projected by a lot of people to defeat this Michigan team. Even on the ESPN broadcast, they were going out there talking about Michigan and how they were number one seed and how they won all their games by a dominating performance of several goals apiece, and then they were not able to get it done against Denver. They only scored two, and Denver, of course, scored the third one in OT. The overtime goal was pretty significant, though, as it was scored by Edmonton Oilers prospect Carter Savoy. You might know this guy because we've talked about him several times on the channel already. His younger brother, Matthew Savoy, is projected to being a top-five pick at the 2022 NHL Entry Draft, but Carter Savoy did not have that same draft potential. He was taken 100th overall by the Edmonton Oilers in the 2020 NHL Draft, 5'9", 192 as a left-wing, left-handed player. And when it comes to Savoy, we've documented this before on the channel, but he is just an absolute monster when it comes to scoring goals. It was hands down his bread and butter back in the AJA shell when he was playing in the junior A scene in Alberta. He had 53 goals in 54 games played in his draft eligible season. And last year, he was a point per game for the same Denver Pioneers team, getting 13 goals in 24 games. This season, though, Carter Savoy has gone out there and led the Pioneers in goals with 23 in 38 games played, and adding on to that, 22 assists for a total of 45 points. He is one of the top point producers in the entire NCAA, and you really couldn't have hoped for anything better if you're an Oilers fan looking at the prospects and saying, okay, this guy was a fourth-round pick. Fourth-round picks don't usually become anything at the NHL level, so even seeing some sort of value and projectability right there... That itself is a good sign, and that's exactly what Carter Savoy has done these past few seasons in the NCAA, giving Oilers fans a whole bunch to cheer about. You talk about goal scoring, you talk about the Oilers needing more depth goal scoring throughout their lineup, well, Carter Savoy, should he pan out and actually become an NHL talent, could probably be that second power play, middle six scoring threat who just has an absolute laser of a wrist shot that he's really not afraid to use. Here's the scouting report on Elite Prospects. Savoy reads defenders like few other players in the draft. He is acutely aware of opposing sticks and actively baits them. He is deceptive, looks off his targeted play, and keeps the same grip on his stick, whether he's passing, dangling, or shooting. That's actually a really important point that I don't think we expanded on in the previous times talking about Savoy. When you hold your hands on the stick the same way, no matter what it is you're doing, passing, dangling, or shooting, or skating with it, or whatever, it confuses goaltenders, it confuses opposing defensemen, because if you don't have that body language to show off, okay, I'm going to open up my forehand, which means I'm probably going to pass it to the guy on my right because I'm a left-handed shot, it makes things easier for the opposition to say, okay, he's doing that, let's cut off the passing lane. Where most players, and you can even try this yourself if you have your own hockey sticks, when you're preparing to shoot, sometimes you'll slide your inner hand down the shaft of the stick in order to get some more grip. Savoy doesn't do that, he just keeps his hands in the same position the entire way through, no matter what it is he's doing, and he's still got some really good shooting mechanics behind it, and it's the lack of nuance that really helps him out when it comes to creating offense and being unpredictable. The goal he scored in the overtime period against Michigan to tie it was an assist made by Bobby Brink, where Savoy had it in front, he shot it, there was a save made, and then he got the rebound. Easy, open net, Denver is off to the finals, it's 3-2, there you go. 
And so we'll see what happens with Carter Savoy, whether or not he's able to go out there in the final game today in about, what is that, like three hours or whatever it is, two hours, I think, and maybe add on to those goal totals. But when it comes to the guy that set him up for that final goal, we also have ourselves a conversation to go over when it comes to Bobby Brink. Now, Philadelphia fans, this is your guy right here, taken in the second round of the 2019 NHL entry draft, 34th overall. Bobby Brink is a 5'9", 163-pound right-handed right-wing player. So, yeah, they're both fairly small hockey players, of course, but still... Bobby Brink had a season for the ages this year in the NCAA as a 20-year-old. He scored himself playing for the Denver Pioneers 57 points in 40 games played. He was the top point producer in all of the NCAA this season, and it wasn't even close. He had a seven-point lead over second place Nathan Smith of Minnesota State University Mankato. And you see the lead that he had in everybody else. He also had a lead in the point-per-game department as well, because Hank Krohn, the second-place guy playing at a Northern Michigan University, had 44 points in 32 games played. So Bobby Brink was the best on-ice skater in the league. And I say that because he didn't actually win the Hobie Baker Award that was sent over to Dryden McKay, who is a goaltender, so he wasn't the MVP of the league, he just happened to be the best skater, and he had a whole bunch of other awards because of it. He was on the All-American First Team, and he was a finalist, of course, for the Hobie Baker Award. But regardless, Bobby Brink has really come into his own over the past calendar year, pretty much, amplifying his playmaking ability and upping his overall production. Playing for the Sioux City Musketeers in his draft season when he was taken in the draft, he had 68 points in 43 games, played a good mix of goals and assists, and I remember being super high on Bobby Brink in particular, even though there was a lot of concern with his foot speed and his agility. His skating wasn't the best, and it's kind of why he even went so far down in the second round. A lot of people believe that if Bobby Brink was just a tad better at skating, he could have been a top 20 lock. And others were still kind of inclined to think about him in that range, despite the skating deficiencies that were existing in his game. However, after two seasons with the University of Denver Pioneers, getting 24 points in 28 games in his first season and 11 points in 15 games in his second, he was slowed down due to injuries, he has really come alive this year as one of the best players in the entire collegiate system as a junior and as a guy who was over an assist a game. 43 assists in 40 games played this season, and the sky has really been the limit offensively for Bobby Brink and the way that he has developed. Here's a scouting report back from 2019 to get a frame of reference as to where he has come from up until now. Not a great skater, but he still brings an intriguing offensive skill set. His hockey sense is impressive. He is a gifted playmaker and can find the back of the net too. He tries to compensate his skating with a great compete level. And yeah, that's pretty much the bread and butter for Bobby Brink over here. Even though he might not have the fastest foot speed in the world, he makes up for it with his offensive poise, his offensive prowess, and his ability to just know what to do. Even in the play that he made to set up Carter Savoy for the overtime winner, he was in the corner battling for the puck after a really good turnover at the Michigan Blue Line. So... It's those plays that showcase his awareness and his willingness to do what needs to be done to keep the play moving forward, and when he does have the puck, what he does to get it to teammates that are on the other side or in tight angles or in tight spaces. He's able to thread passes through with ease, and it's given him a good amount of assists this season where you're just like, wow, what a great play there by Bobby Brink. Projection-wise, it's kind of tough to see where Brink lands in the NHL. Of course, you know, Philadelphia could use a lot more goal scoring as they go into their next few years, especially with the younger guys coming into the organization and building for the future. But assuming Bobby Brink does not improve his overall mobility on the ice, I could see him maxing out as a power play guy who does try in the defensive zone and who does have some tendencies to go into the boards and battle. It's just... Skating is such an important part of hockey nowadays, and so it's difficult to project where players like this could realistically go long term. I definitely could see Bobby Brink getting 15 goals and 25 assists in an NHL season one day. It's just the ceiling is kind of where I have a difficult time pinpointing it out because of that mobility. But either way, you can let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Carter Savoy as well as Bobby Brink if you're an Oilers or a Flyers fan. Are you going to be watching the final game today for the NCAA championship? 
matchups between the Pioneers and the Mavericks. Let me know your thoughts. How do you think these guys are going to do in this upcoming game? How well do you think these guys are going to do in their careers as they make the Oilers and the Flyers eventually? Do you think they're even going to make these teams in the short-term future? Talk to me in the comments on your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.